Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Elf Hub. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Alright, when you first open it you get a little brochure that says Bluetooth user manual LiPo 4 battery and it shows you how to connect to the battery via Bluetooth and then you have a user's manual after that you got a very big piece of styrofoam all right and then you have the battery there we go all right so let's talk about the specifications of this elf hub battery first of all it is a group 24 format uh, that means it's a little bit smaller than a uh, group 31 standard battery uh, i'll go ahead and put the dimensions of it right down here uh, and the weight comes in right at around 22.8 pounds. The battery is pretty unassuming. Uh, it's all in black and it does have uh, some information about what not to do on the back. And uh, the model and capacity and energy amount on the side. Which is odd because it says uh, model blah 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 but it says capacity is 100 amp hours. Nominal voltage 12 volts. That's not correct. Lithium iron phosphate should be a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. And that would not make the energy 1200 watt hours. It would make the energy 1280 watt hours. Along with the battery, you see that the post bolts are already screwed down to the post terminals. And the terminals are color coded for your red for positive and your black for negative. When it comes to the performance, we're expecting to get 100 amps of charge max and 100 amps of discharge maximum continuous. And it says it can do 400 amps of max discharge for one second. But my question is, what happens between the 100 amp max continuous and the 400 amp for one second? I want to know what happens when you reach 200 and when you reach 300. So we'll be testing that in a little bit. Uh, it also says that it has low temperature charging protection. So I'll be setting a cooler down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that is just a little bit below zero degrees Celsius. And we'll be putting it in a cooler for 24 hours to see if that does work. But with every battery that you receive, you should always check the terminals for what the voltage is. And that will determine how well they store the battery before shipment. So let's go ahead and check it out. And the voltage is 13.17. That is exactly where you want it when you receive your battery. So that's great. So the next thing that you should do is go ahead and charge your battery all the way up to 100%. And that is between 14.2 volts and 14.6 volts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a 20 amp lithium iron phosphate charger and then I will go ahead and do a capacity test to make sure that I get the 100 amp hours that I actually paid for. So uh, when I get all that done I'll give you the results. Alright well the capacity test is done for the Elf Hub 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. You can see at the very beginning of the test it dropped down to uh, 12.77 in the first couple of percentages of the test. In the first five amp hours of the test, we're already at 12.77, which is a little bit lower than I would like, but that's fine because in the 90th percentile of the test, you can see that we're still at 12.17. So between 12.77 and 12.17, uh, you're looking at 85% of the capacity of this battery. Um, at 95%, it does drop down to 11.97, which is still pretty good. So in 90%, you're looking at a range of 12.77 to 12. And when it comes to the capacity, you can see down here that the capacity was 103.37 amp hours. So it definitely did pass the test. So now let's go on to the high amperage testing. Okay, now we are gonna do the high amperage test. So let me show you what I got going on here. Okay, what we have is our Elf Hub uh, 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. We have an amp clamp. And we have a voltmeter right here, so we can monitor both of those while the test is going on. We have our 5,000 watt MX Moon Free inverter. Uh, and then we have a 1,000 uh, watt heat gun. 
Actually, it might be it might be like a 1200 watt heat gun, but it gives around around 100 amps. Uh, we also have a 1000 watt Elite Gourmet. We have a New Wave uh, cooktop, which can get up to 1300 watts. And we have a Griddler that can give us 1100 watts. So overall, we should be able to pull 400 amps from this battery if it will let us. So let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just push 100 amps from this battery continuous because that is what the max continuous is rated for this battery. And we're gonna go ahead and just do it for five minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and just turn this heater on full blast. And that is giving us, it should give us right around 106, 105 to 106 amps. And let's go ahead and hit start on here. And I'll let you know what happens in five minutes. All right, well, it's been five minutes and this battery has handled this 100 amps continuous without any issue whatsoever. So now we're gonna start building it up. Now remember, this battery has a 100 amp max continuous rating, but it says it has a 400 amp surge capacity. So what happens between the 100 continuous and the 400 amp surge? That's what I wanna know. So we're gonna keep bumping it up. Let's go ahead and just push another 100 amps in right now. All right, right now we're at 105 amps. The voltage is 12.42. When we started this test, it was at 13.39. So it's gone down almost an entire volt with 100 amps. So now let's click on the Elite Gourmet. And now our voltage is down to 11.69. Our amperage is 209 amps. Oh, and it's shut off. That is perfect. I love that. That right there is exactly what you want to happen. You want your battery to handle 100 amps, but you don't want it to handle much more than that for longer than like, what, 10 to 15 seconds. So I'm actually gonna rewind this a little bit and we're just gonna push 600 watts in, so it'll give us that, what, 1600 watts, and we're gonna see if it shuts off. Oh, and it turns back on, that's even better. So I'm gonna turn that heat gun back on, and then I'm gonna turn on the new wave at 600 watts, just to see what happens there. Okay, so our voltage is going back up, it's at 13.22, amperage is at nothing, so let's turn this heat gun back on. And we've got again 103 amps. So let's go ahead and turn on this new wave. Watts 600, high start. Our amperage is at 168, 169 amps. The time is 747. Look at that, shut right off. So this battery is doing exactly what a battery should do and that is great. But it does say it has a 400 amp surge. And I have just the thing that can give me a 400 amp surge. This shopsmith behind me, it draws right around 400 amps to start up. So let's see if this battery can do it. Okay, so so far this battery is handling everything flawlessly. So we're gonna go ahead and see if it can start up my shopsmith. And my amp clamp is set to max capture, but it can only go up to 400 amps. So if it says like an air code on there, it reached at least 400 amps. So let's go ahead and start it. Three, two, one, start. Oh. Oh my gosh. 399.6 amps of surge. It just didn't have enough time of that amperage to actually start this thing up. Cause it needs about, uh, you know, probably maybe one to two seconds. And I think this battery can only handle a surge for up to probably a half to one second, but it did it perfectly, almost exactly 400 amps. All right, well, I'm not gonna lie to you. This battery has got me excited about what it can do. The only test I have left is our low temperature charging protection test. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Iceco portable refrigerator, and I'm gonna set that to 30 degrees Fahrenheit which is just a couple degrees below freezing. And that is the point where this battery shouldn't charge. And I'm gonna leave it in there for, oh, probably about 23 hours. So it'll have plenty of time to cool off. And while we're doing that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the app and show you what all that shows. 
but I'm gonna chill it out first and then we'll open an app and use that to monitor it while we try to charge it. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, well, it is now the next day and our Elf Hub battery has been in this Iceco cooler for about 24 hours. Now, when I first got down here, um, I went ahead and opened up the app, which I will show you in a second. And it said that the MOSFETs were still at 33 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 0.6 degrees Celsius. And it needs to be below 32. So I've been letting it run at a lower temperature, trying to get down to like between 30 and 31. But in the meantime, I wanna go ahead and show you uh, what you need to do in order to use the Bluetooth on this battery. And the battery does come with this very simple Bluetooth user manual. Um, all it shows is like a QR codes for the app that you need to download. And it gives you the name from your either app store or your Google Play Store. And then it basically just says that you install it, you make sure that you have your Bluetooth and your GPS enabled, and then it will give you a list of everything that has Bluetooth on it and you select your battery and you're off to the races. It is actually pretty easy. I went ahead and set mine up already and this is what you'll see as soon as you get it running. You'll see that at the top, the state of charge is 88%. Um, the charging and discharging MOSFETs are on currently and the balance and the protections are off. Now hopefully those will change when we try to charge this and the under temperature charging protection kicks in. It does show a total voltage of 13.33. The current is zero because we're not using it. The power is zero. Again, we're not using it. And the average volume I think that's the average voltage per cell maybe is 13 point is 3.33 and then the number of cycles that your batteries had this one's had two now right now it does say that the MOSFETs are at negative 0.7 Celsius or at 30.74 degrees Fahrenheit theoretically it's below freezing so this battery should not charge. So I am gonna go ahead and pull it out of this cooler as fast as I can, throw a charger on it and see what happens. And we'll be watching the screen to see if the temperature jumps up before I can do that. But I'm gonna be using this Litime 20 amp charger right here. And this charger right now, it's blinking green. That means that it's on standby. Now when I connect this battery up, it's gonna to go to a solid red, meaning that it's charging but it'll only do that for like one or two seconds. And then the battery is gonna tell it to shut off because it's too cold. So this charger will go to a solid green because the battery told it to turn off. So that's what we're hoping will happen when I connect this up. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out, put it on top of here, and then try to start charging it. And we'll watch the app to see the temperature and we'll watch the charger to see if it actually does shut off. So here we go. Battery's still at 30 degrees. Putting the charger on now. Charger kicks on, solid red. Oh, and it's staying, oh, it turned off, it turned off. Yay, okay, good. It lasted a little bit longer. It actually ran a little bit longer than, um, than usual. Usually it's like one or two seconds. That was, uh, that was about three to five seconds and it kind of worried me, but it did shut off. So it does have cold temperature charging protection. All right, so what do I think of the Elf Hub 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? You know, what's not to like about it? It passed all of my tests with flying colors. This, and this is probably the first battery that has been able to do that in a while. And the one test I'm really talking about is that high amperage protection test. A lot of the batteries I've been testing say they have a continuous of 100 amps, and then they say they have a surge of like 300 and something like that, but they don't do anything 
between that 100 and that 300. They just stay on. They just keep going until they reach that 300 or 350 and then they shut off. And that's just not safe. So if you do have a battery like that, you just need to make sure and have fuses on your wiring. Have, that, have the proper fusing. You never want to rely on the battery. And just like this one, you don't want to rely on the battery, but this one does have the protections in place. It has a 100 amp continuous, which it can do. And then once you get up to like that 150, 160 amps, it shuts off just like it should. And then, uh, but it does, it can power all the way up to 400 amps for that surge. You know, we saw that when it tried to power my, my ShopSmith right here, it got to 399.6 amps before it shut off. It just didn't have enough time, but still it was able to do it. Cold temperature charging protection, check. It scared me a little bit because it took a little bit longer than what I'm used to, but it still worked. And I don't know if you noticed in the app, but it did switch over where the, uh, the charging MOSFET turned off and the protection turned on and it said uh, low temp charge. It, it said some sort of like code for low temp charging protection is turned on. So, so that works just great. Capacity uh, was fine. It was, I think it was 102 or 103 amp hours, uh, which is a little bit over the 100 amp hours that, they, uh, that they're stating it is. And that doesn't include the fact that it has a Bluetooth app so you can see exactly what's going on inside. So if you have any questions about the Elf Hub 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye bye.